dear students welcome to the online classes of endocrinology uh, today i will discuss about the thyroid gland so here you can see the structure of uh, thyroid gland which is butterfly shaped gland so first the anatomy so here you can see the location of uh, thyroid gland uh, which is situated in our neck and its position is between uh, C5 to C7 vertebrae it's just opposite to the C7 and C C5 to C7 vertebrae so here you can see the various lobes of uh, thyroid gland which can extend from uh, just below this thyroid cartilage to, uh, to trachea now histology here you can see the ds of uh, thyroid gland and uh, this gland mainly consists of two cells first is follicular cell here you can see these all ring shaped are the follicular cell the follicular cell secrete uh, thyroxine uh, and t3 hormone and para follicular cells produce here you can see some para follicular cells these para follicular cell produce a hormone called calcitonin now physiology of the thyroid gland so as i already discussed that uh, follicular cell of the thyroid gland produce two main hormones first one is t4 that is tetraidothyronine that is called thyroxine and second hormone is t3 hormone that is triidothyronine so they have significant effect on metabolic rate of the body the second hormone is calcitonin which is secreted from the para follicular cells and it is important hormone for the calcium ion metabolism and homeostasis for the balancing of various um, minerals in our body like calcium ion balance can be done by the calcitonin now the synthesis storage and secretion of thyroid hormone here you can see the uh, structure of uh, follicular cell here it is a follicular cell and you can see these these all are follicular cell so i have shown one follicular cell here the inner part is called uh, lumen so here this part the pink part is shown as a lumen and this is blood stream so uh, the synthesis and storage and secretion of uh, these thyroid hormones uh, can be done in nine in nine steps here you can see all nine steps so i am going to explain that one by one the first step is the uh, secretion of thyroglobin actually thyroglobulin is uh, synthesized in rough endoplasmic reticulum of the follicular cell and this thyroglobulin is secreted out from the cell into the lumen region by exocytosis so once this thyroglobulin comes into the lumen the sodium iodine symporter on other side is also activated so the iodide ion from the blood can easily diffuse inside the cytoplasm of the follicular cell and then it goes towards the lumen through the pendrin symporter so here you can see the pendrin symporter and the iodide ions finally come into the lumen so in the lumen the fourth step is oxidation the iodide ion can be converted into the iodine then in fifth step iodination takes place iodination means uh, the iodine molecule are attached to the uh, this thyroglobulin particularly in tyrosyl residue so here you can see the tyrosine mo molecule tyrosine in the tyrosine you can see the iodine molecule are attached so this is called iodination then conjugation takes place means two tyrosine residue with uh, two uh, iodine molecule are conjugated to each other and similarly here two iodine containing tyrosine 
will conjugate with one iodine containing tyrosine so this will convert finally into t4 and this will convert into t3 then this thyroglobin along with iodinated tyrosine can enter inside the cytoplasm of the follicular cell by endocytosis and inside the cytoplasm the proteolysis takes place proteolysis means this uh, thyroglobin molecule is cleaved out and finally T4 and T3 are released and they can be secreted into bloodstream by unknown mechanism. So thus you can see how uh, synthesis of T3 and T4 takes place and finally they secrete into the blood. So after secretion into the blood uh, they can uh, actually conjugate with some carrier proteins for the stability. So here you can see this conjugate protein. So this is bloodstream and before entering inside the uh, target cell here you can see the target cell. So this T4 is released from its carrier protein and this is called uh, free thyroxine and this free thyroxine actually can enter inside the cytoplasm of the target cell and in the cytoplasm of target cell it can convert into T3 triadothyronine here and here also T3 can bind with some binding protein for the stability and when it enter inside the nucleus actually uh, the receptor for T3 hormone are present in the nuclear so it is nuclear receptor so it is once it is released from its binding protein it can enter inside the nucleus so and it can bind to its receptor here so this hormone receptor uh, complex can then bind to a specific region in the dna here you can see this hormone uh, receptor complex can bind to a specific region in the dna and it activates the specific gene in the form of mRNA. This mRNA can come into the cytoplasm and synthesize the specific protein. Thus, thyroid hormone response takes place. So here you can see the mechanism of action of thyroid hormone. Now, action of thyroid hormones. And here in the left hand side you can see our thyroid system. As you know that uh, our hypothalamus uh, secretes the thyrotropin releasing hormone which goes to the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland and it stimulates the TSH here. So TSH means thyroid stimulating hormone is released from the uh, pituitary gland and it goes to thyroid gland and then it stimulates the secretion of uh, T3 and T4 hormones. And these T3 and T4 hormone goes to their target cells. And in the target cell, they uh, execute various uh, functions like growth and development and they can increase the catecholamine uh, activity. So there, these are the action of thyroid hormones. Uh, first is uh, calorogenic or heat production activity. So thyroid hormone uh, can uh, work in thermogenesis. So thus they help in the thermoregulation of the body. They can also act on the cardiovascular system. They increase the pulse rate increase the force of the contraction further they increase the BMR rate uh, basal metabolic rate uh, by uh, working on the protein metabolism carbohydrate metabolism and lipid metabolism so on the uh, protein metabolism actually they act as anabolic means they increase the protein synthesis and thus result in the positive nitrogen balance on the other hand uh, in carbohydrate metabolism and uh, thyroid hormone produce two opposite effect that balance each other uh, they can induce insulin like action so they increase the peripheral utilization of glucose and cause hypoglycemia or they can induce also hyperglycemia so in this case they can balance the glucose level in the body they, the thyroid hormone also work on the lipid metabolism as well 
so they can decrease the cholesterol level in the serum and T4 decrease the store of triglyceride and phospholipids so thus the they can maintain the basal metabolic rate these hormones are also required for bone marrow metabolism and stimulation of uh, synthesis of additional sodium potassium pumps they are helpful in the growth development gonadal development central nervous system development galactopoiesis means secretion of continued uh, continued uh, production of milk and they are also helpful in hepatic conversion of beta carotene into the vitamin a so here you can see the uh, these thyroid hormones are uh, work in almost every part of the body so these hormones are quite essential or very very special hormones in our body now disease associated with the thyroid gland so it can be divided into three part first is hypothyroidism that is reduced uh, t3 and t4 production and uh, there are three forms of hypothyroidism that is myxedema gratinism and thyroiditis second is hyperthyroidism that is the overproduction of thyroid hormones it is due to the graves disease or thyrotoxicosis and third is goiter and goiter actually is a, a thyroid related disease so i will also discuss about the goiter so first is uh, hypothyroidism and that is a reduced uh, secretion of t3 and t4 and this hypothyroidism is caused because of uh, iodine deficiency or because of autoimmune disease that is hashimoto disease and some drugs can also induce the hypothyroidism like uh, lithium thiocyanates etc and in secondary Uh, sometimes pituitary gland destruction and hypothalamic disorder can also cause the hypothyroidism so uh, um, there are three forms of uh, hypothyroidism the first, first one is myxedema uh, myxedema is also called uh, gall disease uh, so in hypothyroidism developing in adults deposition of excess mucoprotein in the skin of forearm leg and feet so its feature is enlargement of uh, thyroid gland that is goiter uh, lack of uh, interest in daily household uh, work and uh, the symptoms skin uh, you can uh, see the dryness of skin yellow yellowness of skin decreased blood flow uh, edema and puffy face and uh, uh, enlarged tongue deepening voice so these are the some symptoms apart from that some calorigenic action uh, so decreased bmr is observed and uh, bone marrow uh, dysfunction uh, carbohydrate metabolism is uh, uh, dysfunction so low blood sugar level is observed so lipid metabolism is also uh, affected and uh, here you can see the um, sometime peri orbital swelling also seen you can see the swelling just below the eye second form of the hypothyroidism is cretinism uh, actually hypothyroidism developing in, uh, in infants or early childhood due to the maternal iodine deficiency so if mother is uh, suffering from iodine deficiency so their uh, baby can also get the Uh, deficiency and it can cause the cretinism and is in the cretinism se uh, severe mental retardation occurs so iq level only become 25 to 40 and uh, it occurs mainly in the iodine deficient area of the world like himalaya region and the rai belt of uttarakhand in china and africa so there are some clinical symptoms of this disease uh, impaired skeletal development impaired central nervous system development inadequate ma uh, maternal uh, thyroid hormone prior to fetal thyroid gland fun function severe it can cause the severe mental retardation so these are the some symptoms of cretinism and third form is uh, uh, thyroiditis 
or inflammation of the thyroid it is because of the hashimoto disease so in hashimoto disease actually uh, thyroid failure to due to the autoimmune destruction of the thyroid so here you can see the normal thyroid and this is hashimoto disease thyroid so what happens in hashimoto disease uh, actually enlarge and inflate it uh, yeah, under active thyroid this is also a type of goiter so it is a autoimmune disease in which thyroid gland are gradually destroyed so once these th this thyroid gland and de uh, destroy gradually it can cause various uh, symptoms it can cause a decrease in the thyroid hormones and it finally cause the constipation pale dry skin uh, muscle ache and goiter enlargement of the tongue memory lapses joint pain etc so these are the symptom of uh, hypothyroidism and it is a thyroiditis or inflammatory thyroid now hyperthyroidism so it is a condition of uh, increased circulatory free thyroxine hormones or free t3 hormone so it is uh, caused because of graves disease particularly uh, this is also a autoimmune disease that is also exophthalmic goiter so here uh, i will discuss about the hyperthyroidism and so hyperthyroidism is a overreactive uh, thyroid is defined as overproduction of thyroid hormones that is t3 and t4 this condition is mostly or commonly caused by the development of uh, Graves disease that is autoimmune disease in which uh, anomalous antibodies stimulate the thyroid uh, to secrete excessive quantities of the thyroid hormones and this disease progress further and it can form the toxic goiter uh, as a result of thyroid growth in response to lack of negative feedback mechanism it present with symptoms such as thyroid goiter and protruding eyes that is that condition is called exophthalmos so here this is the condition of exophthalmos that is also called graves disease so graves disease is a autoimmune disease in which uh, antibodies own antibodies can uh, react with thyroid cells or thyroid gland So this uh, in this uh, Graves disease, as, as I already discussed, this is autoimmune disease. Uh, so it can induce more production of T3 and T4 hormones, thus increase the uh, quantity of free T3 and T4 hormone in the blood. Now the goiter. Actually, I am discussing this goiter separately because uh, you have seen goiter. Some is toxic, some is not to non-toxic goiter. So mainly, it is two type: diffuse and and multinodular. So goiter is a condition of enlargement of the thyroid gland, and it is the most common manifestation of thyroid disease, and it is most often caused by dietary um, iodine deficiency. here you can see two type of goiter one is endemic endemic goiter and sporadic goiter so endemic goiter actually happen in less than 10% of the total population who are affected by the goiter so it is also got geographical deficient or geographical goiter particularly it happens in the iodine deficient area in the mountain like himalaya and andes and alps so uh, in this case sometime increased tsh is observed and can result from in, in, uh, ingestion of certain goiterogens and some goiterogens are the uh, the agent chemical agent which can prevent the incorporation of iodine with the tyrosine so uh, goiterogens are particularly found in some uh, vegetables like cabbage cauliflower etc and they are also called anti thyroid agent so it also uh, depends on the food habit of the person uh, 
if you are taking more uh, goiterogens it can lead to the uh, endemic goiter second one is sporadic goiter it is less frequent than the endemic and uh, mainly it happens in the female uh, it can lead to multi nodular goiter and here you can see the multi nodes in this goiter so it is uh, mostly the non toxic goiter so uh, to uh, these days uh, you may heard about the iodized uh, salt so actually it is the government of india policy to uh, to include uh, iodine in salt uh, on salt because we use, uh, choose salt because we eat uh, or we add salt in every food either in breakfast or lunch or dinner you you you, you cannot eat without uh, salt so the government introduced this iodine in the salt so these are the symptoms of the various uh, thyroid related diseases now the calcitonin as i already discussed the calcitonin maintain the homeostasis it stimulates the osteoblasts and thus uh, helpful in the bone construction it inhibit the calcium and release from the bone and thereby reduce the blood calcium ion so uh, this calcitonin uh, is helpful in the um, homeostasis uh, one blood sugar sorry one blood calcium ion level decline it can uh, induce the uh, calcium ion maintenance in the blood with the help of parathormone hormone or parathyroid uh, hormone and finally here i have uh, compiled and the uh, all hormones of thyroid gland here t3 t4 and uh, calcitonin and uh, their action and i uh, also summarized the high, uh, effect of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism so hashimoto thyroidism can can lead to hypothyroidism and graves disease can cause the hyperthyroidism so that's all about the thyroid glands and their hormone and uh, if you have any query or uh, if you have any doubt you can ask me in my whatsapp number and stay at home stay safe take care bye bye thank you